Please rise. Dear brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ, on this day the church begins a holy season of prayerful and penitential reflection. Our attention is especially directed to the holy sufferings and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. From ancient times, the season of Lent has been kept as a time of special devotion, self-denial, and humble repentance born of a faithful heart that dwells confidently on his word and draws from it life and hope. Let us pray that our dear Father in heaven, for the sake of his beloved Son, and in the power of his Holy Spirit, might richly bless this Lenten tide for us, so that we may come to Easter with glad hearts and keep the feast in sincerity and truth. <clears throat> o Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, and by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment. Help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to prosper the preaching of your word, to bless our prayer and meditation, to strengthen and preserve us in the true faith, and to give heart to our sorrow and strength to our repentance. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to draw all to yourself, to bless those who are instructed in the faith, to watch over and console the poor, the sick, the distressed, the lonely, the forsaken, the abandoned, and all who stand in need of our prayers, to give abundant blessing to all works of mercy and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to turn our hearts to you, to turn the hearts of our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. O God, you desire not the death of sinners, but rather that they turn from their wickedness and live. We implore you to have compassion on the frailty of our mortal nature, for we acknowledge that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. <clears throat> Mercifully pardon our sins, that we may obtain the promises that you have laid up for those who are repentant. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our service continues with the imposition of ashes. If you feel comfortable, we invite you to come forward to receive the ashes on your forehead. While people are coming up, we will be singing the hymns that are printed on the screens. Remember dust you are, and to dust you will return. <coughs> Remember, dust you are, 
and to dust you will return. Remember dust you are and to dust you will return. Remember dust you are and to dust you will return. Remember dust you are and to dust you shall return. Remember dust you are and to dust you will return. Remember dust you are and to dust you will return. You're okay. Remember dust you are and to dust you will return. Remember dust you are and to dust you will return. Remember dust you are and to dust you will return. Remember dust you are and to dust you will return. Remember dust you are and to dust you will return. Remember dust you are and to dust you will return. Remember dust you are and to dust you will return. Remember dust you are and to dust you will return. Remember dust you are and to dust you will return. Remember dust you are and to dust you will return. Remember dust you are and to dust you will return. Remember dust you are and to dust you will return. We continue our service with the service of with the right of corporate confession and absolution. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Please be seated. Beloved in the Lord, it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ, in which he strengthens us by faith, or strengthens our faith by giving us his body and his blood to eat and to drink. Therefore, it is proper that we diligently examine ourselves as St. Paul urges us to do. For this holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin and who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. But we, when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death. 
from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us. For our benefit, he became man, so that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God, and to deliver us, took upon our sin and the punishment we deserve. So that we may more confidently believe this, and be strengthened in the faith and in holy living, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. It is as if he said, I became man, and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you my body to eat. In the same way also he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Again, it is as if he said, I have had mercy on you by taking into myself all your iniquities. I give myself into death, shedding my blood to obtain grace and forgiveness of sins, and to comfort and establish the New Testament, which gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. As a pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup, confidently believing this word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ and Christ in him, and has eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of him, showing his death, that he was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification, giving him our most heartfelt thanks. We take up our cross and follow him and, according to his commandment, love one another as he has loved us. For we are all one bread and one body, even as we are all partakers of this one bread and drink from this one cup. For just as the one cup is filled with wine of many grapes and one bread from, made from countless grains, so also we, being many, are one body in Christ. Because of him, we love one another, not only in word, but in deed and in truth. May the almighty and merciful God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his Holy Spirit, accomplish this in us. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our sins to him, imploring him for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. We rise. O almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. God, be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not mine, but God's? Yes. Let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, 
and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you full pardon and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for Ash Wednesday is from Joel, chapter 2. Yet even now, declares the Lord, Return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts, and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent, and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending to you grain, wine, and oil and you will be satisfied, and I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the, the founder, founder and, and perfecter, perfecter of, of our, our faith, faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and, and is, is seated, seated at, at the right hand of the throne of God. God. The epistle is from 2 Corinthians chapters 5 and 6. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time I listen to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. 
We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold, we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Return to the Lord your God, for he, he is, is gracious, gracious and, and merciful, merciful, slow to, to anger, anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you and when you pray you must not be like the hypocrites for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others truly I say to you they have received their reward but when you pray go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. 
I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus, thy blood and righteousness, my beauty are my glorious dress, midst flaming words in these arrayed. Lift up my head, bold shall I stand in that great day, cleansed and redeemed, no debt to pay, fully absolved through these I am. From sin and fear, from guilt and shame. Lord, I believe thy precious blood, which at the mercy seat of God Pleads for the captive's liberty Was also shed in love for me Lord, I believe we're sinners more then sends upon the ocean shore. Thou hast for all a ransom paid, for all a full atonement made. When from the dust of death I rise To claim my mansion in the skies This then shall be my only plea Jesus hath lived and died for me. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this Ash Wednesday. And because it's Ash Wednesday, we get to hear those words of our Lord like we do every single year from Matthew chapter 6. I want to reread just one small section where Jesus says, <clears throat> And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Now I hope you noticed what Jesus said there. He said, when you fast. Not if, but when you fast. From this here, and just the way that he says it, we can tell that Jesus assumes that you and me, his disciples, will make fasting an important part of living out our lives as disciples. 
And not just an important part, but a major part of being a disciple. And we can say this pretty clearly because of where it's at in the Bible. As I just said, it, it's in the Sermon on the Mount. And in chapter 6, Jesus is, at least at the beginning of chapter 6, he is telling his disciples how it is that we live out this new relationship that we have with God, our Heavenly Father. So what does it look like to be a child of God? And he hammers out three basic behaviors. The first is that we help the poor. The second is that we pray. And the third, fasting. Now those first two, right? We, we know obviously pretty well that those are the things that we're supposed to do, right? That we're supposed to help the poor and we're supposed to pray. No Christian anywhere has ever had a problem with that. However, that third one, I'm convinced is, well, it's been neglected. Especially by American Christians. We often don't think about that. And I think it's so neglected that as I was writing the sermon, I, I had to wonder if I actually just needed to give a definition for what fasting is. And so I think it's probably a good idea to review it anyway if that thought occurred in my head. If for any reason, simply to teach the little kids that are here tonight to make sure that they realize that fasting is not, you know, running really fast somewhere. Luther has an excellent definition of what it means to fast. He says this, he says, True fasting consists in disciplining and restraining the body, which pertains not only to eating and drinking and sleeping, but also to your leisure and your pleasure, and to everything that may delight your body or that you do to provide for it and take care of it. To fast, then, means simply to refrain and hold back from all such things, and to do so only as a means of curbing and humbling the flesh. So what Luther says is, fasting is just when we take all that stuff that we like to do and that we enjoy to do, and we just don't do it. And the reason why, we'll get to in half a second. And speaking of Luther, though, we Lutherans really have no excuse when it comes to neglecting fasting. Because Luther himself had a really high view of fasting. You guys remember the small catechism, the sacrament of the altar? Jesus, or, uh, Luther is talking about what it is and how, what it takes in order for us to be uh, worthy and well prepared to take the sacrament. Right? And he says, fasting and bodily preparation are certainly, what? Fine outward training. Right? So he thinks that they're good. We, though, a lot of times as Lutherans act as if he would have said, you know, that fasting is useless and it's a worthless old habit that people used to do, but don't worry about that because it's no good and that's just what the Catholics do. But again, that's not what he said. So again, Jesus assumes that we're going to fast. And Luther had a high view of fasting. So then what I want to do with the rest of the message tonight is simply to encourage you in that practice. In the practice of fasting. As a major way that you can live out your relationship with God, our Heavenly Father. But on top of that, I want to make sure, and this is Jesus' point of emphasis, that you are fasting for the right reason. So we just need to ask, very basic question, why should we fast? Well, right away, Jesus just shoots one of the motivations right out of the water. Right? As soon as he comes out of the gate, he says he can't do it for this reason. We heard that. I'll read it again. He says, And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces for this reason that their fasting may be seen by others. So what we see there is that we cannot fast in order to impress other people. But how easy that is to slip into, right? Humans love to get affirmation. We love it when other people tell us that we're doing great, we're doing wonderful, we need to just keep it up. We love praise. 
We love it so much that it actually can become a temptation to make that sort of the sole motivation for all things in life. And that includes things of our religion. But Jesus here says that that is no good. And the reason why is because we end up thinking more about what other people like and what, they, what other people think about us rather than what God thinks about us or thinks about anything for that matter. And you guys know well enough that those two things are not the same, right? So, no, we don't, we don't fast for that reason, but it's not just fasting. We can have the wrong motivation for any type of behavior, right? It can be the wrong motivation for fasting or not fasting or getting ashes or not getting ashes. So how can you tell? Well, you just ask yourself the question in your heart. Be honest with yourself. Why am I doing this? Why am I fasting? Why am I getting ashes on my forehead? And if it's because that you care what other people think about you, then repent. And work on changing your motivations. And it's really easy to do this. You simply pray to God. And a fantastic prayer is the prayer that we know very well. Psalm 51. Where we pray that God would create in us, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. That new heart is filled with new motivations that get away from the old sinful ones that Jesus doesn't like. And that's a prayer that God will certainly answer for us. So no, we don't, we simply do not uh, we do not fast in order to impress other people. So why do we fast then? Well, as we just said, it, our fasting should only be visible to God, right? Since that's the case, and we're not trying to impress people, it's easy then to start thinking that we fast in order to impress God, you know, to show him how much we truly love him. How much we think about him. We want to impress him with our devotion. In essence, we want to earn his approval. And it can even get so bad that we do this in order so that we can basically claim those promises that Jesus said in the gospel. Right? Where he says, fast so no one sees and your father will reward you. But the thing is, it's not exactly the most mature way to think about your relationship with your Heavenly Father. Right? You're, we can't just do things because we think God will reward us. That's a, that's a pretty poor motivation. Or that it will avoid trouble and hurt for us. I mean, that's the same way, and I know no husband would actually do this. Like a husband who... Uh, only avoids or does certain things just so that he can avoid the wrath of his wife. Right? You, I'm sure you all are innocent of that. The thing is, we don't earn God's approval by our righteous deeds, by fasting or anything that we do. And when we actually offer up our righteous deeds to God and say, look at all this good that I've done, God. Why don't you love me now? Why don't you accept me now from all this stuff that I've done? That's when Isaiah 64 has some very, very, very strong words to say to us. The ESV translates it like this. It says, all of our righteous deeds have become like polluted garments. That's not what the Hebrew reads. And I'm not actually going to say what the Hebrew says lest I scandalize a bunch of people. So if you're curious, come to Bible study and ask me, and I'll tell you there. But needless to say, offering up our righteous deeds to God for his approval isn't going to work. But the thing is, we still can have God's approval. It just doesn't come through our works. It comes through Jesus Christ. That's what the New Testament is all about. That's what the Bible is all about, not just the New Testament. But Paul really nails this home perfectly in Galatians chapter 2. In Galatians 2, this is what he says. We know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith 
in Jesus Christ. So you are approved by God. God approves of you, not because of the stuff you've done or not done, but because of Jesus Christ and what Jesus has done for us. So, we don't fast to impress people or to impress God. So why do we fast? Well, eventually it all kind of comes down to what today is all about. Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday is the very beginning of Lent. The 40-day preparation period that we're getting ready to celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And as we do, we especially today remember why it is that Jesus did that. Jesus went through the suffering and the death because of us to fix what we had broken. And what we broke was creation. And I'm not just talking about, oh, Mother Nature, something up in the sky. I'm talking about other people. Because that is God's creation. You can think of God's creation like a stained glass window. It used to be perfect, but now it's got some holes in it. Now to be sure, we weren't the first ones to chuck the rock. But we've certainly added our own. We've taken aim at each one of those panes that are still intact. And every time we say a cruel word, or we seek revenge, or we gossip, or we look lustfully, or any of those things, when we mock our elected leaders, when we do those things, we throw more rocks and we continue to break creation. And the price to fix that creation, that stained glass window, is the death of the Son of God. That's what it took. And the thing is, it's not like he just showed up, died, and left right away. Think about everything that he endured during his ministry. You know, when we say in the Creed that he suffered under Pontius Pilate, it's not just talking about Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. It's his entire three-year ministry. The moment that he was baptized and his ministry began, Satan started to attack him with everything that he had. His family and his friends rejected him. And his family even thought that he was crazy. His followers had no clue about who he was or what he was doing. And he received nothing but animosity from those people who should have welcomed him with joy and with love. And this doesn't even cover the actual torture and death, excruciating death, that he went through. And he went through that for you. You couldn't fix what you broke, and you can't help but breaking it more. But Jesus said, I'll take care of it. I will fix it for you. And now that it is finished... God forgives you. And the Holy Spirit tells you that good news. He says, you made a mess of things, but that's okay because we've taken care of it. You don't have to worry about it anymore. You see that, Jesus? He died to fix your mess. And he gives that to us through the word and in the sacraments. And he gives it to us. Not because we're worthy. Not because we fast. Not because we don't fast. He gives it to us by grace. Well, this is just a churchy way of saying he gave it to us because he wanted to. And the Holy Spirit calls each one of us, calls you to follow this Jesus who did that to save you from death. To follow him as his disciples on the way to everlasting life. And when all that truly sinks in of everything that Jesus did for us and what God went through to fix what we had messed up, how could we not try to be the very best disciples that we could be? 
It's truly as the hymn says. But drops of grief can ne'er repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I can do. And that's what we do. That's what we want to do. So we fast to try to be the best disciples we can be. We fast in thanksgiving and in praise to Christ. We fast because our sinful nature with these frail bodies and, their, and its appetites and gluttonies and desires and addictions and lack of moderation gets in the way of living for Jesus. We fast to remind ourselves that the purpose of life is not to have full stomachs, to have full wallets, full houses, or full anything. The purpose of life is to have a full faith. The purpose of life is to serve the crucified and risen one. That is why we fast. So I want to encourage you Christians... This Lent fast. You don't have to, but I'd strongly encourage you. And so does Jesus. Fast. Give up whatever. Chocolate, caffeine, alcohol, bread, coffee, TV, social media, whatever it is that you think would be appropriate for you. But as you do, may your fast, may that grumble in your stomach or the desire to chug a Mountain Dew and you resisting it, may that be a way in which your body sings a song of thanksgiving to God. A song that says, Thousand, thousand thanks shall be, dearest Jesus, unto thee. Amen. Now we rise and we sing the offertory. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. With thy spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave, and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully 
to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Highest, blessed is he. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.